Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Sadek Waba, Chairman and Managing Partner of I Squared Capital, an independent global infrastructure investment manager. In September 2022, President Biden appointed Sadek to the National Infrastructure Advisory Council, which advises the White House on reducing the physical and cyber risks and improving the security and resilience of critical infrastructure in the United States. He joins me to discuss the Silicon Valley bank fallout from a political and economic standpoint and the similarities and differences from the SVB response to the great financial crisis in 2008. Sadek, it is great to see you again. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Jill, great uh, to be with you. Thank you. You got it. And do you believe the Biden administration made the right move as it relates to the SVB fallout the second biggest bank failure in U.S. history? Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> they did the right move. And in a way, it was inevitable because you have to take into context uh, the situation that we're facing. Since 2008 that you've alluded to, uh, the great financial crisis, we have had uh, 14 plus years of financial monetary expansion through quantitative easing. And then in 2019, we got hit by COVID and then the Ukrainian uh, war. And then on top of it, inflation that reached almost 9% uh, last summer. So in that context, the last thing we needed was a run on the financial system in the United States. Do you think the breakdown of the global financial system 15 years ago appears to be shaping Biden's response today? Explain what is similar and different so viewers can better understand the nuances as another bailout of the banks. It's a little bit tough to swallow those optics. The differences are, in my view, uh, very clear. 2008 happened because of a mortgage, uh, commercial mortgage bank situation that was across the United States and impacted one of the largest and most important sector that we have, which is real estate. Uh, and that impacted the entire financial system. In this particular case, uh, it really was related to a particular sector, the tech sector, uh, and venture capital associated with those institutions that fund the new technology sectors and innovations that we have in the United States. And a certain number of banks that had concentrated in that particular area. If the economy had been doing well, if we had a strong economy, we had good growth rates, good unemployment, low unemployment, a strong currency, then that impact would have been isolated. As I said earlier, the problem is that it came in the context of all of the issues we talked about, the global financial crisis, over $2 trillion of money put into the economy because of COVID, a war in Ukraine that pushed energy prices way high and caused havoc on different sectors in different countries around the world, and then inflation coming up. So all of that, and then on top of it, the Fed contracting the economy. So the, the, the situations are very different in that sense, but the end result or the policy tool that was adopted by the administration is the right one. You do not want to add fuel to the fire. Right. And that was my next question. What could have happened if President Biden and the federal government did not come to the aid of SVB depositors? Look, it's difficult to speculate, but look at, for example, what's happening today with First Republic. The stock went down by 24 percent, um, even though uh, several of the key banks put in 30 plus billion dollars of deposits into First Republic for at least the coming 120 days. Uh, yet the stock continues to drop. Uh, I think if the Biden administration had not stepped in, and the Federal Reserve and the Treasury and FDIC had not coordinated their uh, response, we would have had potentially a run on the financial system in the United States the same way we would have had in 2008. And that is because the context we're in does not allow us to be able to take on that additional risk. Uh, and that is something that we have to keep in mind. It was the right decision at the right time. Right. Do you think bank regulations could potentially evolve as it relates to stress testing, liquidity and capital requirements? It's a difficult question to answer right now. Uh, the reforms that happened post the 2008 crisis created what we call systemically important banks. Um, SVB was not one of them. There was no reason to 
make it one of them. And that shows you in many respects, the risk that we're facing. Even though it was considered a regional bank, yet today we find ourselves having to save that bank and to effectively backstop all of the deposits. So there are inherent risks in the system. Uh, we should be able to address over the coming months and years. Uh, but at the end of the day, there is no regulation that you can put in that effectively will protect you against a run on the bank, except government interference and government, I should say, intervention mm -hmm. uh, in a very strong and unequivocal way. How do you think this could potentially impact the Fed's policy on the interest rates? The Fed is in a bind. Uh, it has uh, twin objectives. One is, of course, stability of the financial market. The second one is uh, ensuring uh, low unemployment and low inflation. And so very much like the European uh, Central Bank that in fact increased its rate by 50 basis points uh, and did not hesitate to do that, I think it sent a very important message, which is we will ensure financial stability, but we will also continue to fight and fight vigorously against inflation. And I think the Fed is in that position. It has to send a message that we will fight inflation, and I suspect next week they will increase rates by 25 basis points. But at the same time, we will ensure that we have the financial stability that we need to be able to continue economic growth and to be able to reduce unemployment. Okay. Sadek, we appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thanks for having me.